this week we have cured a ham at home and it's very very simple and I'm gonna put the ingredients down below and exactly how I cured this now this is only about three or four pounds this is a wild hog that I shot uh, a week ago while I was out bow hunting and uh, it was just perfect eating size so I decided hey what the heck I may as well go ahead and try to cure my own ham so I'm gonna put the recipe down below it's been in the brine for about three days now generally the rule is a pound per day or however strong you make it but the general rule is about a pound per day this is about a three or four pound ham so uh, we should be ready to go now a uh, brine is generally pretty salty so we're going to throw just a generously light coat of uncle steve's competition pig powder on the top of this thing now we do have our weber kettle uh 22 inch weber kettle started up We've got the uh, snake method going with the charcoal. We do have some lump charcoal in there with some apple wood chips. We got that started up and I put some hot water in the pan that'll be just underneath the ham to help catch everything when we glaze it. Because here in a little while, after this has been on there for about an hour, we're gonna start making a glaze and slapping that thing on there every 15 to 20 minutes. So, in about two hours, we're gonna be enjoying some delicious home cured smoked ham. Remember we're just doing a light coat of Uncle Steve's competition pig powder because this has lots of salt that was already in it. I'll do a little bit more in-depth video on how to cure a ham later on. This is really us trying out a new recipe and we want to see how it turns out. What we did though, after we pulled it out of the brine, is I put it on this wire rack and we wanted it to go under running water for about 10 to 15 minutes to make sure all that brine's off and uh, that cure number one stops penetrating the meat. So we let that get a nice, uh, nice tacky, dry skin on the outside. We let it sit for another 10, 15 minutes after we ran water over it, just open to the air and let it get really ready for this dry rope to go on. Now, we hit this uh, light coat of Uncle Steve's competition pig powder and we're gonna let it sit for just two to three minutes, let it start to soak in. Our smoker, we've got uh, the top of the kettle open at about between half and three quarter. And we've got the bottom open at three quarter and uh, we've got our charcoal rolling nicely with a little bit of apple wood and some water underneath it. So I think it's ready for us to go ahead and throw. All right guys, we're gonna get this on our grill. We'll be back here in about an hour to check on it. And make sure that when you're using your Weber, you face the exhaust on the opposite side of where you have your charcoal and fire built. And uh, we're gonna place this with the most of the bone side down on the ham right over our water pan there. Our chips are starting to smoke really nicely. We've got some nice white coals there. And uh, we'll put our lid on, vents facing the opposite side. Now, a lot of you may be noticing there's something weird about this kettle, and next week I'm gonna go over this kettle. I did buy it used, and uh, there's some things I'm gonna go over just to review it for you, so you know what to look for if you buy it used or pre-assembled to make your life so much easier. I'll see you in an hour. All right, guys, after about an hour in, let's go ahead and open it up and see how it's looking now. I'm estimating this to be going at around 225 to 250 degrees. There's no um, temp gauge on these Weber kettles, but uh, I'm going off feel here, and by the looks of it, and by the grates being open the way that they are, I'm thinking 225, 250. So this is gonna be a low and slow process, and we're gonna go ahead and check on this and see what kind of color it's getting. Some decent color. It's starting to capture some of that smoke. You can see our charcoal is only burned a little bit, maybe a third of the way. And uh, I think we're gonna end up using all of it as we go through this cook. I think this cook is gonna take another couple hours uh, before we're all the way through. This is looking pr pretty good. And uh, I'm gonna close this down for another 45 minutes or so and come back and check on it.
Okay guys, it's been on for almost two hours. So what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna take this ham and we're gonna spin it 180 degrees to kind of keep that one side from being hammered by the heat all by itself. And then we're gonna take and we're gonna put some probes not only in the meat but also on the grill so we can monitor everything that's going on. And in about 30 minutes or so, we're gonna mix up a glaze to put over the top of this ham to make it oh so amazing. I apologize about the wind noise guys, but come on, let's get this ham spun around and get it ready for some glaze. Alright guys, so it's been another half hour, so this ham has been on there for just about two and a half hours now, and it is time to start making our glaze. So in my little saucepan on my Weber, I've got it sitting over there getting it warm. It's got approximately a half a cup of apple juice in it, and uh, let's go ahead and get that pulled out so that we can start mixing the rest of our ingredients for this glaze. So like I said, we've got approximately half a cup of apple juice in our uh, little saucepan here. And uh, we're gonna put about a quarter cup of maple syrup. And right around a quarter cup or just close to a quarter cup of brown sugar as well. We're gonna give that a good mix. And really all we're making here guys is a simple sugar or a simple syrup sorry um, out of the uh, brown sugar maple syrup and uh, apple juice great flavors that pair so perfectly with ham now that apple juice was nice and warm not quite to a boil but warm enough for those things to start to dissolve in and now i want to kick this glaze up just a notch and i'm going to add approximately a tablespoon of Uncle Steve's competition pig powder. It's got a little bit more sugar in it, some salt and pepper, and uh, we're just gonna whisk that in there. And we're gonna get that put over the top of the coals and let it get nice and warm for about 15 minutes or so before we start basting for our final hour of cooking. Alright guys, it's been just over four hours and we've hit our target temps that we want to hit for this ham, just over 160 degrees. Let's go ahead and pull it off and see how it looks. Oh man, this is looking absolutely delicious. This uh, Uncle Steve's competition pig powder cure, all of it that we did, it made this wild ham look like a delicious ham. Nice and glazed top, real nice smoke color on it. And uh, that glaze really, really put a good crisp on it. I'm gonna take one little slice off of the side I'm just going to taste this bad boy. Beautiful ham color. I mean, that's just really, really nice. Beautiful red ham color. Really nice. Wow. Wow.
That's impressive. I'm impressed. I'm very pleased with the turnout of this wild hog. I've never cured a wild ham before. It's not exactly the same as a store-bought ham, but it is delicious. Mm. Guys, if you want this recipe for how I cured this ham, look down in the description below. If you like this, if you like things like this, hit that thumbs up. Make sure you comment down below. Maybe what you want me to what you want to see me do next as far as curing goes. I'm thinking of backstrap. Making some Canadian bacon. But also, if you haven't subscribed, please do. This is Brisket Medic telling you I love you. Three more.